What's going on? What is going on, y'all? We're gonna have a good one tonight. Let me put the comment, the topic in the comments so y'all can know what we're gonna talk about tonight. We got a special guest coming on. So it should be one of my, my clients has agreed to come on and she's doing some really big things. So I wanted her to come on to talk real briefly about um, some of the things that she's doing, not just in her business, but um, in the community. Because um, I thought, you know, what she's doing is very commendable and it should be talked about and it should be broadcasted more than what it is. So we're going to talk about that tonight. Let me set this up so I don't have to hold it the whole time or whatnot. What's going on, y'all? But well, we're going to have a good one. I see Randy's on. Hey, Randy, I'm going to bring you on in just a moment. Let me let a few more people come on real quick. If you can hear me properly or comfortably, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you can hear me. Emmanuel, what's going on, man? Long time. If you can hear me in the comments, let me know. So I'm not for sure if you can. Cedric, what's going on? We got a good topic tonight. It's... Uh, the business voting edition. I'll tell you more about what that means in a little bit. Um, you know, but how's everybody doing? Um, how's life going? How have you been adjusting to this pandemic? Well, in Texas, it feels like the pandemic is pretty much over with, even though that's not true. Um, when we look at the numbers in Texas, it's actually, I'm hearing number one out of all states, but we're acting like it doesn't even exist. Um, so I hope everybody's taking the proper safety precautions and the proper safety measures uh, to, you know, to stay safe. Are y'all still quarantining? Are y'all still, you know, doing what needs to be done, wearing masks, you know, taking care of yourself, you know, eating a lot of sea moss, elderberry, all the, the good stuff that keeps you healthy? Let me know. But, um, yeah, we're going to have a good one tonight. We're going to, I'm going to bring Randy on in the next minute or two. What is it, 859? I'm going to bring you on a little bit. But, yeah, y'all talk to me. If you can hear me, let me know in the comments. Um, if you voted, let me know. Me and Rita, we went to vote today. It was a real short line. I thought I was going to have to be in there for hours because I've been hearing so many stories about people being in line for a long, long time, but we got in and out. It was real quick. Uh, so I was happy about that. And I was able to go run some more errands and get some more things accomplished today. So I'm, it's always a good day whenever you're able to get a lot of things on your to-do list accomplished. I know I've started, I've started writing everything down, all my to-do. Every day that I have something I carry these notebooks around with me and I just write down my to-do list and I just keep going um, and I cross them out once I've accomplished whatever it is that I have to accomplish. I think I feel like, and I only do this during tax season, but I started implementing this year round because I heard that it's, it's worked very well for other people that I know. And um, I like it, you know, because it's constantly letting me know things that need to be done. And if I keep this with me at all times, every time I think of something, I can write it down and get it done later. Or better yet, instead of me doing it, I can delegate it to somebody else on the team to handle it. Because a lot of the things that we do or that is put on our plate, a lot of times we can pass that off to someone else to handle for us. You know, so I'm, I'm trying to be more mindful, trying to get in more of a habit of passing work on to somebody else. You know, so let me know if that's what y'all do. Laurel, Ashley, how's it going? Ruck, how's it going? Alba, how's it going? I'm about to bring um, Randy on right now. Randy, if you're on, let me know. I'm about to bring you on. This is going to be a good one. Um, Randy, send me a request. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. The business voting edition. I know y'all are probably wondering what this business and voting have to have to do with each other and stuff, but you're about to find out. Um, Randy, really? 
Wait, so you went and got glammed up? Come on, Randy. No, really? I'm still here. But I'm still here working. You're still there? Yes. So before we Glammed started, up. Gl this is not <laughs> glam. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, it's more glammed up than me. But before we get into it, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? I know you've been on with me live before last year, but for those who don't really know you, can you tell them a little bit about you and your business? Oh, so I have a home care agency that I operate, that I've been operating for the last six years um, in Sugar Land. So we cater to the senior community, assisting with activities of daily living. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what we do. <laughs> how long How long have you been in business? Uh, six years. I don't know. How long have you been doing my taxes? How long have you been <laughs> in my account? However long that is. You since 2015 is you know when we started working together so yeah so yeah. it's about six years right six seven years right it yeah they're about so how many employees do you have in your business right now twenty two twenty two employees yeah and you're managing I guess everybody how do you do it like what's the, what's the secret <laughs> there is no secret so. I have learned that a good leader knows when to delegate, which mm -hmm. has been an issue of mine for a long time. And I think just here recently, I finally realized, okay, I have to delegate. In order for me to expand and grow, I have to delegate and have great people on my team. You know, I have to train the right. people that, um, that are on my team to be able to take care of the service failures, pretty much just teach them, you know, train them how I would handle any situation. Right. Oh, so, yeah. And one of the reasons why I brought you on is because, you know, you've definitely obviously been doing a great job of that. So much so that <laughs> right now, can you tell people where you're located right now? Where are you sitting right now? So I am sitting inside of the break room at uh, an early voting location in Katy. Um, at John Paul Landing, 9950 Katie Hockley, Cypress, Texas. Um, so I'm working at an early voting location until 10 o'clock tonight. I've been here since 6 o'clock this morning. Wow. Wait, so you've been at this location, but is this like your first day? <laughs> is your first no, day so, no, no, no. So this is day 15. So, so I've... Literally been, been working six. the past two weeks nonstop this is from my third 6 a.m. Yeah. to about 10 p.m. every day? Not every day. So just this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, um, polling locations across the Houston area have been open until 10 p.m. Okay. But so essentially what's, what's big about this is that when's the last time? That, I mean, I'm sure you still go to the office every now and then on the weekends, but you really haven't been able to lead your business you haven't been able to run your business you've been volunteering at this early voting location and your business is still operating while you're still i'm still getting i'm still getting a paycheck actually <laughs> as, a, as a matter of fact i was before we jumped on i was sitting here and i was going over my payroll about to approve payroll so i'm gonna get paid okay um i have not been to my office in eight days how does that eight feel? days that is huge for me no <laughs> it is huge no, for me that is so huge for me like just right. thinking about that that gives me a sense of anxiety because it's like ugh. like i don't have my hands in everything you know so, so would you, would i haven't you, been there in eight days would you call yourself like a mini control freak type of person micromanager or what like <laughs> maybe just a little bit <laughs> just a little bit just a little bit. but you've been able, i'm just proud of the, the fact that you've been able to say you know what i'm a i'm a micromanager i'm a control freak but i'm going to i'm admitting it i'm the first to yeah. say i am totally a control freak it took me a long time to realize that i was my biggest setback i was holding myself back randy was holding the business back and i think that's important for a lot of entrepreneurs 
Well, let me just say this. I feel like entrepreneurs and business owners are completely different. Right. In the sense that, and we've had this conversation several times, I feel like business owners are the one employee, you know, the, 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 they have the one employee, which is typically themselves. Right. Now, entrepreneurs are the Ephraims of the world, the Arnitas of the world. <laughs> really? You know, so Randy, you, can have way more, you have way more um, people that you work with than me. So, like, you're, well, you're downplaying your, you know, where you're, you're at and what you're doing. The thing that I like, though, about, since I know you personally, and I know that you do have control, uh, you know, anxiety. <laughs> the, the fact that you say, you know what, I'm not going, because for me, even, like, there's times where I've traveled to Nigeria with the family and I haven't been here, but I'm still kind of working. Like, my mind is still there. And I'm sure your mind is still there, but. My the mind is definitely still there. Right, but the fact that you're able to work literally 12 to 16 hour days and no one's really, well, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know if people are constantly bothering you from work, but just being able to unplug and say, I'm going to focus on volunteering. Nobody's bothering me. Nobody is bothering me. That is amazing. Like, I'm kind of worried because I'm like, okay, what's going on? Like, nobody's right. saying anything. Right, so. but the fact that no one's bothering you. You're volunteering. You know, you're giving back. Literally, you told me earlier today that you're going to be volunteering for 19 days. You know, so that's 19 days away from your business. But this is real. This is like something that really means a lot to you. Making sure Absolutely. that. Can you talk about what made you even want to volunteer? Like what experience did you have that made you want to say, I'm going to literally step away from my business for 19 days and volunteer at this uh, voting location? So what happened was during the primary, I had like, I waited for like two hours to go and vote. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just ridiculous. Like, so the Democrats had like one, they only had like four or five machines. The Democrats had to vote on one side, the Republicans had to vote on another. And all of the uh, poll workers or clerks as they're called, as I know to call them clerks now, I didn't know that, you know, back then, but they were like, oh, if you have a complaint, just call this number, whatever, whatever. Being an entrepreneur, I'm like, uh, I don't want to call and complain because nobody likes to get complaints, right? And it's just going to fall through the cracks. So instead of being a part of the complainers and, the, you know, talking about it and not being happy, I said, I'm going to be a part of the solution. So what can I do to ensure that someone doesn't have an experience like I've had here today? So I said, I'm just going to, I'm going to see if I can work the election. And I kind of wow. put it on the back burner. And then it just so happened, like, as we got closer to the election, it like, it just kept nagging at me. You said you were going to do this. You said you were going to mm -hmm. do this. Just do it. Just do it. Right. So I just went online and I, I didn't hear anything for like three or four weeks and it, it was a big deal. But then I was like, if I don't hear anything, then it wasn't meant for me to, to, to be a part of this historical moment. Right. right. Um, but on a Sunday I got a phone call and they were like, Hey, are you still interested in working the election? And I was like, yeah, sure. Totally. And so originally I thought it was going to be just a few days. Like she said, Oh, it'll only be like three or four days. And I was like, I can totally swing that. Right. So then, <laughs> so then here's the funny part. They called me and they were like, well, you know, we were thinking that, um, you could probably be a judge. I said, a judge, what do you mean? What is that? And so she goes through this whole spiel and it was like, you know, a presiding judge, they basically stay at the polling location and they oversee any issues that are going on. You know, they they can assist with pretty much anything that's going on in the election process. And I was like, well, this is my first time doing this. I really think I should just be a clerk. But then again... I had this nagging feeling that it just wouldn't leave. And it, it just kept saying, Randy, you got to do this. You, you said you wanted to be a part of the solution. You have to do it. You have to do it. So I finally was like, okay, I'll do it. So here I am, a presiding judge yeah. over an election, a major election. And 
I come in with clerks that I have never met, know nothing about them from different sides of the aisle. So <laughs> there are um, four Republican clerks that I have to work with, four Democratic clerks that I have to work with. Um, and the alternate judge is a Republican. So I'm like, oh, Lord. Wait, wait, Mind who, you, who's Republican? The alternate judge. Okay. So like my backup, if I can't be here, he's like, he then oversees everything, right? Mm -hmm. So he, um, mind you, he called Harris County on me and was like, because at the bottom of my, <laughs> this is, this is freaking hilarious to me. At the bottom of my email, you know, I have this signature with my picture. So he emails, he emails the county, he emails Harris County and says, I haven't heard anything from my presiding judge and I think she's bailed out and she hasn't, you know, she doesn't want to be a part of this anymore. So the county calls me and they're like, uh, yeah, you know, your alternate judge said he's never heard from you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, wait a minute, wait one minute. And she was, you know how I am Ephraim, you right. know how, <laughs> you know how I am. I was like, okay. That's not true. I've emailed him and I don't have any information to give him. Right. So I get into this, I come October 13th and I get here and I'm like, I do not know what to expect. I get here and it's, it has just been an experience. Let me just say that. And I tell him, I'm like, you know, I'm sorry that you feel like I wasn't being responsive, but I had no information to give you. You know, I've never, I mean, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, you want me to call you every day and tell right. you Harris County has not sent me any updated information about what's going on with early voting. I don't have anything to give you. So anyways, we had long and short, it's been a great experience. Um, we had a conversation just yesterday and his exact words to me were, you know, I didn't know how this was going to be. I just thought there was this young, you were this young black woman. Mm -hmm. This young black woman who had no idea what she was doing. <laughs> so there again, I had to be like, okay. And I just had, I had to, you know, I had to tell him, I was like, well, and he, he was very complimentary saying that I've created such a, a great work environment. And I had to tell him, I said, you know, this is what I do. This is my thing. While I may have never had any experience working at election, this is, this is my arena. This, I, I'm familiar with working with people. I work with people from all walks of life. This mm -hmm. I felt, I just fell right in. And right. I mean, it's just, it's been an experience. I will say that. Well, first off, I had no idea that you were a presiding judge. I didn't know. And I'm glad yes. that you broke down. Check out. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you broke it down because that literally speaks to your leadership ability, right? Like, yeah. how did they even pick you to be a presiding judge? <sighs> Like, I don't how know they, because how they know that you had the ability to to do that. You know, did you have to submit some kind of resume or something like that, or like what what happened? So they call me and they ask me like what my work experience was, and of course, you know, I don't ever like toot your own horn. I I don't ever toot. Yeah, I don't do that. I have a hard time doing that because I feel like people will see who I, they'll see God through me, and God will do the rest. That that that's that's truly what I believe. And I've always, you know that I've done essentially no marketing with my business. And I mean, I, I just let God handle that. I, I walk in a room and people just, you know, that God's light will shine through me. Yeah. I so, love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a, this is a great testament to your work ethic, your leadership ability, you know, um, the fact that you're literally, if you think about it, even though you're not managing your business right now. So for those of y'all who are just tuning in, um, this is Randy, one of my clients. She owns a personal care business. Um, she has 22 employees that um, work for her. 
And the reason why that's so important is because... They work for me. They work with me. With you, yes. I, that's, I like to say work with me. So you're right. Work with you. And the reason why that's so important is because um, when you have a business, you know, not having employees is one thing, but actually having to manage people that work with you. And you're not just managing the work that they do, but you're managing any personal issues that they have, just a lot of different things that, that really um, right. come in, into play. That's a lot on one's plate, not to, ma not to um, talk about managing the clientele that you have. Well, right. she saw an issue with um, a voting location that she went to, and she was like, you know what, instead of being um, someone that complains, I want to step in and be a solution. So she literally um, has been working nonstop at this, voting, at this early voting register, uh, location and she hasn't been able to operate her business. Her business has been able to operate on its own because of all the systems and, and processes that she's put in place. And she's not, it's not like she's going to this location. She's working for two hours a day. She's working 12 to 16 hours volunteering, not getting paid. Are, are you getting paid? So I opted out to not. <laughs> even crazier. So, and even if you were, it probably wouldn't be the same as what your regular pay would be. You know, oh, no. probably, right. So it's, it's, sort of like, it's like $20 an hour. You can get $20 an hour, but I mean, yeah, yeah. It, so so the, it's I, decent pay. Right. right. Uh, so the fact that you actually opted out speaks to your character because you could have literally double dipped. You could have continued paying yourself from your company and then took this pay, but you, you didn't. So that speaks to your character even more, but you literally went to this location and you're volunteering literally um, 19 days straight. That's what you told me, right? So, so yeah, early voting is 19 days this, this year. So it's the first time that it's ever been three weeks. Um, so I've been working from October the 13th at 6 a.m. until <laughs> October the 30th. And then I will also be working election day. Right, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Election Day is going to be a movie. <laughs> Election Day is going to be crazy. It's yeah, be crazy. I agree. And it's the fact that crazy. you are presiding over all this and you have to manage the work. And I've never done it before. I've never done it before, ever. I've, I've never done it. Right. And the fact that, here's the thing. So the fact that I've never done it before and... So there were trainings that they had, Zoom trainings, that I didn't need. The first training that they had, uh -huh. something happened, and the systems weren't working, so I couldn't attend it. I mean, so I, we couldn't do it. Then they right. had two additional trainings that I didn't attend. Okay. So I had no training, none, absolutely zero, right. but nothing. And like... you just said, I'm, I'm going to, you know, black women are amazing. I, I just have to say that. Y'all are truly amazing because... The fact that you even said that, um, that you were able to literally just say, you know what, I have no training, but I'm going to walk in here and I'm going to be like, okay, this is what needs to happen. You, you're here, you're there, you're there. We're going to really, and we just have to be on the same page and we're going to be cohesive. Right. That, that's truly amazing because I wouldn't have been able to do that, you know. And so I, deep and down I, inside, you know, I, I remember waking up that morning and I was like, oh my God, like what have I gotten myself into? Right. But I just prayed through it. And here I am. I'm, I mean, I have two days left. Right. And would I do it again? Absolutely, 100% do it again. You would do it again. So four years Absolutely. From now, four years from now, Absolutely. they call you and they're like, we want you to come in and do the same thing. You would do it again. Mm hmm Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's been a 100%. bunch of comments that we've So here's the thing. I, here's a few things that I just wanted to say also, because it's so many, uh, it's so much misinformation that's out there that people just don't know. Okay. Um, so I know like today you, you called or you texted and you were like, Hey, do I need my voter registration card and yes. my ID? So just so you know, you do not, you only need your ID. Like, that's all you need is your, I know a lot of people have, you know, the numbers have been unprecedented, right, with early voting. So a lot of people have already voted. Um, but if you haven't already voted, you have un to early vote until Friday at 7 p.m. You can vote, if you're in Harris County, you can vote at any early voting location. It doesn't have to be your precinct. It can be anywhere in the city. And uh, Chris Hollins has done an amazing job with making sure that, um, 
everybody is given the opportunity to vote. Meaning, you know, if you work 7P to 7A, they have 24 hour locations all around the city. Um, they have locations like we're open until 10 o'clock tonight and tomorrow. Um, I think even at like different plants, like the chemical plants and things like that, they have polling locations. I mean, it's like 120 locations all over the city to early vote. So there's no reason we shouldn't be voting. None. Like we have no reason to not vote. Wow. Wow. So um, and I'm glad that you were actually a resource that I could have, that I could reach out to because right. I can only imagine someone else like, so for what she, what Randy was saying earlier, like whenever we, me and Rita were ready to go vote, I was looking for my voter's registration card that came in the mail. And I don't, I still can't find it. I don't know where it is in the, in the house. And I like to, I'm a person that likes to keep things in one place. Rita, you know, me and her at times will like butt heads because she likes to move my stuff around and stuff. But I, I like to put things in, in like the same place. Like I'll put my yeah. keys in the same place. I'll put, you know, different things in the same place. And if I go to that place that I expected to be at and it's not there, then, you know, it's like, oh, crap, like, where is it? So I couldn't find my voter's registration card. And so I immediately texted you. I texted my um, brothers as well. And I asked, you know, do I need a voter's registration card to vote? And but all of you said, no, all you need is your ID, of, like a form of ID or passport or something, you know? Right. And, if I so even have... if you don't have a photo ID, here's another thing that a lot of people don't know. You just need a government. It doesn't even have to be a government issued um, identification. Say, for instance, you lost your ID. 2020 has been a crazy year, so it, I wouldn't be surprised if, it, you know, people have lost IDs, anything. So you could bring in a utility bill as long as it has your name and your address on there. If you're mm. registered to vote, you could bring in a utility bill, a government check. Like, I know people don't get checks anymore. It's typically direct deposit. Right. Um, but for stuff? me, it a was a pay stub. Yes, a pay stub. <laughs> you can bring in a pay stub. That's mind blowing. People don't know that. And all you'll have to fill out is like a red form, which has an affidavit on there that's saying that you are who you say you are and that um, you're going to be voting. And that's it. It's people are just uninformed. They're they're just uninformed. So they don't know. So they're afraid, okay, well, I don't have my photo ID, so I can't vote. Um, there's also information like in my home, like in the county that I'm from, like I was texting my dad, um, and my stepsister, and my stepmom, and I was telling them, Hey, make sure y'all go vote. Like they're, you know, go early vote. And they were like, Well, we can't find our voter registration card. I said, I I no, you don't need it. All you need is your photo ID and don't mm -hmm. let anybody tell you that you have to have both because you don't. Mm -hmm. That's voter suppression. If they tell you, you have to have both because you do not at all. Just one. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, so for those of y'all who are just coming on, I see a bunch of new people. Theo, what's going on? Jakeisha, Sheena. Um, Randy is one of my clients. Um, she has an amazing business. She has a personal care business. She has 22 people that work with her, not for her, as she says. Mm -hmm. um, so she actually went to a voting location. What month did you go? Um, so it was during the primary that I actually went. When I went, um, when, you know, it was, it was early on during the primary. Okay. So she went during the primaries, and she saw some things that... I went in Katy. Right. From where in Katy, Texas. Right. Yes. And I had to wait for like two hours. Right. And I was big mad. So she saw something, <laughs> the, the wait and a bunch of other things didn't really sit well with you. So instead of you picking up the phone and complaining, you said, you know what, let me be a difference maker. So she literally has volunteered to work at an early voting location in Katy. She's taking time from her business to go literally vote, I mean, to uh, volunteer. And not just as a clerk, but as a presiding judge, which no, nothing wrong with being a clerk, but presiding judge means that you have to literally manage the whole process of everything that's going on at that location. Yeah, and like I'm in charge. Like if anything pops off, it's, they're going to be like, where's Randy Houston? <laughs> right. And so the fact that you're doing this means that you have to be there literally 
from early morning, 6 a.m. till about 10 at night, which she's still at the location right now as we speak. Right. And she's doing this right. 90 days straight while she has a business. So that shows that she's been able to set her business up properly to where her team is able to handle everything for her while she's doing volunteer work, you know? So right. that I, I needed, I was like, we have to highlight this because when you told me this today, I was like, we got to come live and talk about this because this is amazing. I'm not at that point in my business to where I can do that. Um, you know, if I- Who's not at their point? No, you totally are at that point. You just, <laughs> yeah, you're totally at that point. I, I still have clients who are texting me, emailing me, you know, calling me. So everyone is still, I, I don't feel like I'm there yet, but I'm, I'm getting closer. But the fact that you're there and you're able to step away from your business and go volunteer for literally three weeks and your business is still running, yeah. that's a testament to your hard work. And Pretty Mama Cookie, she's been uh, in, in the comments, uh, oh. Black Girl Magic. That's my cousin. Hey, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Candace, what's going on? Trina, how's it going? But yeah, so I, I had to bring you on here to highlight you because this needs to be talked about. You know, the fact that you business, if you set it up right and you do everything that you're supposed to do right, can create an avenue for you to have flexibility and do some volunteer work, do some meaningful work in the community. You know, give back you, to your community is the big, you know, that's, and as you know, I love to. I'm a cheerful giver. Like I probably, sometimes I think I give too much, um, but I, I just have to give back in some way, form or fashion, whether it be time or anything. I, I just, I just love to give back. No, I, I agree. I think, I think that that's something that should be instilled in, in all of us, especially every business owner, you know, to whom much is given much is expected is expected you know so we definitely have to do that we have to set the, the tone and if we set the tone from the very top then our team can have that too like that should be a part of a lot of our cultures right you know that's right be that is ingrained where it's like okay whenever it's time to vote and we have employees that vote give them a couple hours a day whatever it is to make sure that they go do right it. you know make sure that you're fostering a really good situation for them to do these things because there are people that are going to want to work for you that that's a big thing for them they want to be at a company to where they can give back they can do things in the community you mm -hmm. know so being absolutely able to, being able to create that environment for people is, is amazing you know um so shout out to you and all the work you've been putting in you know yeah i've been putting in a lot of work but i'm glad that you highlighted that because like i said i feel like i just have this all this information that so many people don't know about um because people are thinking that they can't vote and they really can and for me if you don't this is going to be so political but i'm sorry <laughs> if you don't vote that's a vote for trump I'm just saying, you know, I, that that's how I feel. I feel very strongly about that. So there's no reason why you can't, like, you can't go out and vote. Um, early voting has been three weeks. Um, I'm trying to think, like, I had, I took some notes because I just had all of this information that I just wanted to give people. Um, I also wanted to say that I know a lot of people are relocating to like Texas. Um, so, or just different or Houston in general. So if you did relocate and you, you know, you changed your address on your DP, you know, when you did the DPS, whatever, you know, the change of address. Um, if for some reason, you think that you're not registered in Harris County per se, and you are registered in another county, you still can vote. You can vote here in Harris County. You can go to NRG and do a limited ballot as long as you were registered to vote in your previous county prior to the election. I'm sorry, prior to the registration cutoff date of October 5th. So you still can vote. It's a limited ballot. But you you just really can't vote. You can't vote for any of the county, um, mm. the precinct, uh, you know, the precinct elections. But you can vote for president, and that's 
of course important. So it, okay. you know, it's, it's, as the old folks say, it's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, right. It's too much information out there. Look, if there's anybody that has any questions about anything about voting, if they don't know if they're registered to vote and, you know, I've seen a 75 year old woman who's never voted a day in her life come and cast her vote here. Oh wow. At that moment, I felt like my job was done. It was a black woman. Oh wow. It was a that's black amazing. woman who had never voted. That's, a, so that's really amazing. That was an that was enough for me. Yeah. That I was like, okay, my job is done. I'm I'm sure you definitely seen I've, a, I've impacted a life. No, I'm, know. I'm I'm happy for you. I love the work that you're doing, you know, and I was like I needed as soon as you told me that today when we finished <laughs> voting, I was like, me and you got to come live. We got to talk about this because this needs to be highlighted and people need to know about, yeah. you know, like, I know a lot of times, you know, us that have started a business, it can be overwhelming. It can be very time consuming. You're literally in it 24 seven. You're constantly working within it to where you don't, you're not really thinking about everything that you have to do outside of it. You know, you have family, you have friends, you have, health, spirituality, so many things that you have to do um, outside of your business. And a lot of times we can get over consumed with it to where we lose sight of everything else, you know? So the mm -hmm. fact that you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm, I'm going to go hire the right people, put them in the right places so I can free up my, my schedule to now I can now go back into the community and give back and right. not just give back for one day, but give back for 19 days, three weeks straight. That's that's amazing. And you that's know, huge for me. That is my huge. When I say said, huge. I am writing in E from Egg Belly for president. That's hilarious. E. <laughs> <laughs> Go E. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm not ready that's for better that. better than Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> but now nah, I appreciate you for coming on. Um, you know, one more. Let me tell everybody that just jumped on before we jumped off that are just now tuning into our conversation. Randy is a client of mine. She owns a personal home care business. Um, she has 22 employees that work with her that she manages and works with. And she went to a, a voting primary location, you know, early on in the primaries to vote. She went to go vote and she saw some things that she didn't really like. So she said, you know what, instead of me complaining, picking up the phone and complaining about what I don't see right, I'm going to now put myself on the line take myself from my business and from everything that I'm doing every day. And I'm going to be a volunteer. And when she applied, they not only said, we want you, we don't only just want you to volunteer. We want you to be the presiding judge, which means that she manages everything at her location. So she has to, she has the most responsibility out of everybody at her location. She has to be there from early on in the morning at six till 10 at night. She's there right now in the break room. As we <laughs> You know, <laughs> so it has to be highlighted, you know, but um, shout out to you. I don't want to keep you on too long. I'm sure you got to go wrap up everything at the location. Yeah. And stuff, but I, I definitely want but to. But I have a good team in place again. Team. I have a good team in place. I'm telling you, this team has truly made. I don't know. They've they've complimented how I've made the environment so easy to work in. But that's what I do. That's. That, yeah. that's my thing and I know that that's truly I'm I was put on this earth to serve and that's what I will continue to do to serve and we appreciate you, so. your service <laughs> yeah. so again if anybody has any questions about voting if they're you know wondering if they can vote if they're registered um hey just hit me up I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have um, because it's a lot of information that I didn't know that I'm learning that I've learned. And I'm like, if I didn't know this and I feel like we're all into, we're all on Google and the internet all the time, but I just, it's, it's a plethora of information that people most, just don't know. Most definitely. About and voting. It is so important. You know, now they don't really have to go. I mean, I always tell people to go Google and figure things out, but Mm -hmm. If you have a resource like yourself that's willing to give that information, you don't even have to go do that. You can just DM her right now 
and right. she'll literally answer questions for you. I will literally talk to anybody. I am. I will literally talk to anybody and t tell you everything that I know. <laughs> you know, I've had people tell me, oh, my God, you've been so nice. You've been so helpful. I've, this has been a great experience. And for me, that's it. That's what it's all about. You want to have a great experience so you can continue to get out and let your voice be heard. Well, definitely. Well, I appreciate yeah. you. I'll let you wrap up at your location. And okay. we'll talk soon. Thank y'all. Have a good evening. All right, y'all. Be blessed. <laughs> <laughs>